Hi, and welcome to today's lesson. Wow, we are powering through these today. The tangent function is the one we are dealing with. Now, it's actually obviously uh, pretty clear that you know, of all the graphs we've dealt with so far, sine and cosine seem to be the priority. Uh, why? Well, probably because they can be fitted to the most real-world situations, and they appear all of the time. Tan graphs, great to look at, great to sort of do algebraic manipulation to it, but I, I can't think of too many examples of tan graphs that actually apply to real well. But we're going to do it for completeness, and it's also in the textbook, and as part of the methods course, I suppose if it's in the textbook, we have to do it. All right, so here is our recap. We spend lots of time looking at sine and cosine, which are important functions, but one of the things you're going to need to know for this is that tan theta is equal to sine theta divided by cos theta. Actually, that's going to be really, really important to help us sort of later on manipulate stuff. We can work out tangent for any of our typical values of theta by using the two triangles we've been using today. So just as a recap, here are the two triangles. There's 30 degrees, there's 60 degrees, there's a right angle. We know that sine of 30 is a half, which means that's root 3. That's one of my triangles. The other one is 45. 45, and I know off the top of my head that tan of 45 is 1, which is 1 over 1, and that becomes root 2. So those triangles there can absolutely help you to find most of the typical values. If you need to find 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, generally use all stations to Canberra, which basically tells you that in this situation, the horizontal distance is cos, and the vertical distance is sine theta. All right, so again, there's a video on that if you want to have a look. So here it is in all its former and wonderful glory. Here is the tan graph. And yeah, it looks very different from everything else we've seen. But one of the things that stands out straight away are those dotted lines, which, as we are aware, in mathematics stands for asymptotes. What is an asymptote? An asymptote is a line through which a graph or a function will never cross. It will get closer and closer and closer to, but it will never meet or, in fact, cross. So you always need to make sure when you draw tan graphs that you don't actually cross over that line because you'll lose a lot of marks. Asymptotes are at pi on 2, minus pi on 2, 3 pi on 2, minus 3 pi on 2, and so it goes on. Here are some of my asymptotes. Now, the period of a tan graph is actually pi. So what you notice is the difference between that asymptote and the asymptote is pi. And it's really important to note that if you know that this value here, if you for some reason are asked to find that value there, then to find its similar value, well, you would just add on pi. The range of a tan graph is real. All right, that seems rather random, but yeah, for certain sections of the graph, you, in fact, for all sections of the graph between minus pi um, 2 and pi on 2, but not including, you can put all those real values in and it will just go, go on. But there are these asymptotes. So there is a formula we can use to help find us the asymptotes. And it's 2k plus 1 times pi all over 2. And lots of people say to me, but what is k? K is any number you want it to be. So, for example, to find the first asymptote, you would let k equal 0. So we would end up with, if we got 2k plus 1, times pi all over 2. Well, when k is 0, that disappears. And so we get my first asymptote at pi on 2, which we've already decided. When k equals 1, then we get 2k, which is 2. We get 3 pi on 2, which we know. When k equals minus 1, what do I get? Minus pi on 2. When k equals minus 2, we get uh, minus 2, which would be minus 3 on 2. Now, that's just a way of working out our vertical asymptotes. And thankfully, we can work out our x-axis intercepts just by using the same process and just saying, well, the first x-axis intercept will actually be at 0, because remember, you would always start with k equals 0, and 0 times pi would be 0. When I have a k equals 1, I would then work out that my asymptote would be pi, which is freaking awesome, actually, when I look at it. The only problem is my graph here doesn't have enough space for pi, but assuming then we had minus pi as well, which we would, then we have that's about minus 3.141597, blah, 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 blah. So that is the tan graph. Really, really beautiful, really useful. And again, like with all other graphs, the tan graph can, in fact, be transformed. Like we've done in so many lessons before, this is a trick. 3 tan, open bracket 2x. We want this value of x to have a coefficient of 1. So we have y is equal to 3 tan. Take the 2 outside the brackets. That becomes minus pi on 6. Now I have a graph that I can actually look at. And if you see... As I've said here, we then can say, or oh, I have a dilation of 3 from the x-axis, dilation of factor of a half 
from the y-axis and then a translation parallel to the x-axis or in the positive direction of the x-axis by pi on six, which when I put into my beautiful graph sketching uh, equation or what have you, lo and behold, out that comes. Now, the same thing happens. The period in this situation is actually now pi on n. Why is it pi on n when all the others have been two pi? Well, think about it. Your standard period of a sine and cosine curve is two pi. The standard period of a tan curve is pi. So because I have that two there, I now know that the period of my tan graph becomes pi on two. And having got that piece of information, you just split the graph up and, and draw it in sections, okay? So this is where the funky stuff comes in. We can use what we've done before to help us solve you know, various pieces of information. So solve the following equation for between zero and two pi. Firstly, it's rewritten and it's a bit of a trick. So you always need to rearrange that to so they have tan on its own. So you've got tan of two x is root three on three. So I'm gonna find out all my values of two x by saying tan to the minus one of root three on three. I'm gonna put that into my calculator now. K board trig tan to the minus one of root three root three divided by three close the brackets no don't put a comma close the bracket equals and it gives me my first value is pi on six and i say my first value as pi on six now with tan it's awesome because i only ever have to work out one value and then just keep adding on pi and taking away pi so if i want to add on pi that's the same as saying six pi on six so to the top, I'm gonna keep adding six pi. So I get seven pi on six, 13 pi on six, 19 pi on six. Hold on, how many of these do I actually need? Well, we go back to here. We want two x. Now, basically speaking, normally for a tan graph, we would have one between pi. So we would want two between, uh, yep. So between zero and two pi, we would normally have two. And so we would be looking for four solutions. Well, that seems to be four solutions. I'm just gonna check, because if I actually take away, well, there's no point taking away six pi from this one here, because I'll end up with a negative value. So if you remember, those are all the values for two x. To get my values for x, I just half them. So it becomes pi on 12, seven pi on 12, 13 pi on 12, and 19 pi on 12. Are those all within? zero and two pi, they absolutely are. And so I can use the same ideas as I did before, okay? And I, again, the same rules apply every single time. Find that initial solution, which was here, all right? So do this on your calculator, then work out, well, how often does it repeat? Me, I always, always, always do it this way. I don't try and do it any other way. I then add on pi to each one or take them away if I need to and then work out the actual values of x. Now, here is a trick question, and it's where we use this result of tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. I have seen these questions on an exam so many times, it's untrue, and I've seen so many kids mess them up because they just forget this simple, simple trick. You can't solve that at the moment. I mean, you can if you put it on your calculator, but the chances are it's not gonna be on your calculator paper. I know that sine theta divided by cos theta is equal to tan theta. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna divide everything here by cos 2x. And you're gonna say, but hold on, you were talking about thetas a moment. Well, the same thing, sine of 2x divided by the cosine of 2x is equal to the tan of 2x. Right, cosine divided by cosine gives me one, and that gives me tan of 2x. And lo and behold, now I can actually solve this using the stuff we were just using a moment ago. So I know that 2x is equal to tan to the minus 1 of 1. I know the inverse tan of 1 is actually pi on 4. So I've got 2x would give me one of my values would be pi on 4. Next one I would have as 5 pi on 4. How many am I looking for? Well, again, uh, I'm looking for tan. Normally there would be two solutions between there. So I'm looking for 4. So add on another, what is it, four pi gives me nine pi on four and 13 pi on four. Those are the values for two x. So half everything gives me pi on eight, five pi on eight, nine pi on eight, and 13 pi on eight. And lo and behold, 
Again, there are my solutions. Wow, another quick flick through this type of stuff. The tangent function, you've looked at the graph. Please, please, please remember all the important information there. And you've looked at how to solve trigonometric equations just by noticing that when sine and cos are the same. One thing I actually should go back and say, this is again, pretty important. Whenever you have two equations, sine 2x equals cos 2x, whenever you have two equations equal to each other, or two functions equals to each other, please, please, please always think what it is they're actually asking. And when you equate two functions together, you are always, always, always finding the points of intersection. So assuming that this was my sine curve, sine 2x, which will be uh, pi and pi on 2, and then you've got cos 2x, which would be that. Whenever you're putting them equal, you're being asked to find the points where they intersect. Now, because this is only falling between zero and pi, and we want it between zero and two pi, that would be my first solution, that would be my second solution, and there would obviously be another two. But by solving that, or by turning that into tan 2x equals one, it's just easier for us to manipulate because we don't actually have to sit there and draw the graphs. But Again, with exams and SACs and what have you coming up, it's really, really important that you always remember that when you put two functions equal to each other, you are finding the points of intersection. All right, again, this is another video done. Hopefully it made lots of sense. I look forward to seeing you next time. Joining us for that video, it was really good having you. Now, if you'd like to know when the next video is coming, why not click on subscribe? Alternatively, head on over to mathsguru.com where you can watch all of the videos on its own dedicated website. While Otherwise, watch the video that's just popped up. It'll be part of this series. All right, take care. See you again soon.